Lord, not only to mothers and fathers, but to everyone. That your word would go forth like a hammer and break in pieces the most stubborn heart of resistance. For Lord, it's your word that brings power. It's your word that brings liberty. And where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. So therefore, Lord, we just ask that your word go forth in demonstration of the power of Jesus. Uh, talk to you a little bit on uh, mothers. As you know, and actually, I'm going to talk about a few mothers. And if you would open, you know, the example of God that honors mothers in the Bible. There's Sarah, who was the child of Isaac. There's Jochebed, who was the child of Moses. Hannah, same with the child of Samuel. Elizabeth, the child of John. Mary, Matthew, Lord, we just thank you, Eunice, the mother of Timothy. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. You know, many men, I mean, I could have took many mothers out of this and preached on it. And, but there's one special mother in here that did what mothers and even men are supposed to do. And um, if you look at Acts chapter 16 with me, this mother's name is Eunice, and grandmother's name is Lois. And it, and it goes on, and they are Timothy's grandmother and mother. Acts 16 1 says, Then he came to Derby and Lystra, that's Paul. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy. The son of a certain Jewish woman, that's Eunice, who believed. Now, in Clark, Eunice believed, but his father was in Greek. His father was an unbeliever. So here you got a household that's divided. But Timothy was impacted through the faith of a single parent. And what we got to realize is it just takes one. A lot of times we say it's got to be a mom, it's got to be, um, it's got to be both. Sure, it has to, it should be both. But you can take one and get the job done. And that is the reason why it even says in Corinthians, if a wife have an unbelieving husband that believes not, let her dwell with him. So I'll tell you what, if Eunice and Lois didn't dwell, in this case, Eunice didn't dwell with her husband who was in Greek and left and said, I'm out of here to stage left. She would have never been imparting the word and the lifestyle to Timothy, who went on and came with Paul, one of the greatest evangelists there was. So I'm here to say to you, mothers, never give up. And I say this never give up because you know what? It takes you, Jesus and you. It takes four. Father, Son, Holy Ghost and you. And you know, the Bible says that even your children are sanctified. So you and Jesus are greater than the unbelieving part here. And in 1 Corinthians 4, 17, he says, For this reason I have sent Timothy to you. Paul now all of a sudden develops this relationship and takes Timothy. And it goes on and it said, Took Timothy with you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord. Who reminds you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church? You see, through Paul, even though he wasn't a physical connection with him, spiritually he became the type of father that Timothy never had. And I'm here to tell you, you can become a mother that you never had to somebody else. How many of you know that you may not have mother, children? physical children, but you can be a, a, a mother to somebody else. Your lifestyle can touch another son, can touch another mother. And I'm here to tell you, no matter what it is, mothers, you have an impact. You have an impact on your lifestyle to people. You have an impact on, on everything you come in contact, every mother, every person, your lifestyle. This is the word influence. The word leadership means one word, influence. You can be like Eunice and influence other people in your life as a spiritual mother as Eunice did to Timothy. Paul indicated in 2 Timothy 1, verse 5 to 7, when I call to remember 
hindrance the genuine faith that is in you. Now Paul's talking to Timothy. Look, Timothy, I call to remembrance the genuine faith that's in you, Timothy. It's in you. It's genuine, which dwells first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded in this, is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. We read that in context. Timothy was going to go through some real hardships in life with, with Paul. He was going to be persecuted. He was going to come to a place. You know, on the first missionary journey, Paul and met Timothy, and Timothy actually saw Paul stone. And, and in the second missionary journey, Paul came to a place and met Eunice and Lois. So all of a sudden, on the missionary journeys, Paul's meeting his actual disciples and his, the people that are further going to minister with him. So he said, I'm the Timothy. I'm not giving you a spirit of fear. Timothy, you're going to go through trying times, but I've given you power. Timothy, I've given you love. Timothy, I've given you a sound mind. And every single one of you mothers out there, God has given you power. He's given you a spirit of love. He's given you a spirit of a sound mind so that you can carry out what God has called you to carry it out as a mother. Can you say amen? amen? And so he goes on here and he says, he says, Paul indicates that God used a mother and a grandmother in a significant way to influence but not determine the child's future. Look at that one, Timothy 5, 7. Genuine faith was in Timothy. But to have that genuine faith in Timothy, it had to be in the grandmother. And it also says not only the grandmother Lois, but also in the mother Eunice. And he goes on and he says, I have reminded of your sincere faith. Your sincere faith. And he goes on in verse 14. Look, you've learned these things, Timothy. You learned them from Grandma. You learned them from Mom. But I'm going to tell you something. In 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15, he says this. Mom and Grandma and not Paul. He says, but as for you, Timothy, continue in what you have learned and you have become convinced of how many of you know the word of God being convinced in you so that you can not, you go on in a greater development of manhood or motherhood than you ever had before if you will continue with the word of God and be convinced of it because you know from those who, you, who learned it. He goes on and says, here it is, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. From infancy, Timothy learned it. He goes on, and that's why he says, continue it. And I'm, and I'm here to say this to you. You may not have learned the scriptures from infancy. You may not, like Timothy, had the opportunity from go to, from grandma to mom and to the spirit of him where it became a genuine, sincere faith. But I'm here to tell you this. You became a child of God. You were born of the Spirit of infancy. Once your spirit was open, you became an infant. And when you became that infant, the Father God, through the Holy Spirit, came in you. And He's saying this hey, as you continue in what you have learned and been convinced of, from the same of this one, from being born again, you now have known the Scripture. So we can look at it spiritually, or we can look at it physically, but a lot of us here have not had the word of God from our grandmother down to, to our mom, because we got saved, and we reversed the curse after we, mom and dad and everybody else were born. And I'm here to tell you this, your parents, you know, did the best they knew how, but I'm here to tell you, if you've been hurt by mom, if this Mother's Day is, is one that's hurt for you, hurtful for you, you see many people don't like the fact that 
you know, I had a bad experience with mom. I, had, I don't look forward to that day, Mother's Day, because all it brings up is to her. I'm here to tell you here that Jesus Christ's law and Jesus Christ's power and Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit can bring you to a place where you can reverse, reverse the curse and you can look and you can forgive and you can say, hey, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Saints, you have a responsibility, and that's to walk like Christ. No, not the three generations, Grandma Lois, to her daughter Eunice, to her son Timothy. Paul somehow found out that Timothy, when he was a very infant, began to learn the scripture. His mom and grandma, and perhaps some others, made it their mission. I'm here to say motherhood is one of the highest and noblest expressions of faith known to man. But what are the characteristics of a mother's faith? Mothers have a sincere faith. And I say that because in 2 Timothy 1, I call to remembrance the sincere faith. So mom has a sincere faith because she was able to impart it to Timothy. So right then and there, Paul claimed that this was possible because of the sincere faith of Timothy's mother. A mother is, a mother is equipped with sincere faith. Right from when the incorruptible seed goes into a person's spirit, all of a sudden that seed starts to germinate. And God, one plants, one God, one waters, and God gives the increase. And as that increase comes, it's a sincere faith. It's the word of God. Flesh and blood has not revealed it to me from my father, which is in heaven. Paul somehow, the second point I want to share here is a stable faith. We said sincere faith, but I'm here just to say with that sincere faith, there's a tremendous ability to never run out of impatience to look after your children. There also a mother never loses faith that God will watch over her household. We want to thank God for the faith of mothers. Sure, you may come to a place where things aren't going right in the household, but the mother never runs out of patience. Sure, in a household, there may be trouble. There may be an opportunity to throw your faith in, but a mother never runs out and loses her faith. A mother, a mother will always persevere right to the end. So we said a sincere faith. The second one is a stable faith. Then there is a higher faith than sincere faith. After sincere faith, we see something. I want you again to notice that even though Lois was a woman of great faith, she was able to pass it on to her daughter, Eunice. Now you talk about stability. Here it is. Lois' faith was stable. Why? It stayed strong enough to pass it on to Eunice. You talk about stability. Think about it. If, if Lois was wishy-washy, if Lois didn't get into the Word, if Lois was doing and not partaking of what she should have, she would have been wishy-washy in her faith. But what do you think she would have passed on to Eunice? And what do you think Eunice would have passed on to Timothy? But you see, there was stability because it went from grandma to mom to the son to the world. So stable faith. And there also was a stirring faith, sincere faith, stable faith, and now a stirring faith. Stirring faith. Why? Because it goes on in 2 Timothy 1, and it says, stir up the gift. I remind you, therefore, stir up the gift of God which is in you. There it is again, in you. Timothy, you have sincere faith. Why? It's in you. Through Lois and through, through Eunice. Timothy, I want you to understand you have a gift within you. Train up a child in the way bent, gifting he should go. And when he gets old, he won't depart from it. And I'm here to tell you this. That gifting, that, and again, we can use the scripture, train up uh, the way they should go, the word. But down deep within your heart, there's a passion. There's a gifting God has placed it. And you over, over a period of time realize 
God all of a sudden leads you into a place of desire? The Bible goes on and says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desire of your heart. That word desire means of uh, sire, the father. So if you delight yourself in the word, he'll give you that which is of the father. You commit your way unto him, and he'll give you and lead your path. Delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desire. That is what it's of the Father. That is the gifting. That's what you as you as an individual, as a mom, as a dad, as a mother in this case, you're gonna to come to a place to train up that child in that gifting that God has placed within them, not the gifting that you want them to be. So you're always looking and you're always saying, hey, you know what? I see something special in that child. Uh, you know, as a mother, you see, you see it. You, you discern it. The Holy Spirit will show you. Because a man's way plans, a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And you may want to plan his way, but they'll never be happy as an individual until you let the Lord direct your steps. That's the way they need to train. And that's the reason it's that's a stable phase. It's the stirring. I remind you, stir up the gift which is in you through the main out of hands. And there comes a place in time that, that as man, you're going to come to a place where you're going to help them fan that fight. Paul told Timothy that he was sure that Timothy inherited faith that would allow him to fan into flames the gift God gave him. Stir it up, fan the flame, keep it going. You see the passion, direct him in the way God wanted him to go. You model the faith of your mother. Timothy modeled the faith of Eunice and Lois, what he saw. I remember hearing about a boy who used to like to play at his friend's house. Every time he went over there, Grandma was sitting on the porch reading her Bible. After seeing this for a long time, he finally asked his friend why his grandma was spending so much time reading the Bible. His friend told him, I think she's studying for the finals. How many know what I'm studying for the finals? How many know we're all going to stand in front of each other and see the finals? How many know that we're all going to study for the finals? How many want to lay down gold, silver, and precious stone? How many know we ought to be studying for the finals or eternity? And you know, I'm going to share a eulogy, I believe, for Eunice. Eunice actually was an extra had an extraordinary responsibility. Women, you have an extraordinary responsibility. Eunice's responsibility in Deuteronomy 6 says, You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you shall sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. And Eunice did that with grandma. Eunice, second thing, Eunice is eternal record. Eunice's earthly record is found in 2 Timothy 1 5 by stirring up the gift to when, I, when she calls to remembrance the genuine faith from infancy. So here you have it, from infancy. One of the rewards was the her responsibility of Deuteronomy 6. Her second responsibility was the eternal reward, the reward from the day of infancy. Mothers, as you put the word within them, one of the eternal rewards that you're going to see before the Lord Jesus Christ is the gold, silver, and precious stone. Eunice, eternal reward. We see Eunice's eternal record. We see her eternal responsibility. But number three, her eternal reward. Romans 14 says, For none of us lives to ourselves, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again. That he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. 
But why do you judge one another? Or why do you show contempt for your brethren? For we shall all give account before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, so that each shall give an account to God himself. And why, what does that have to do? Eunice is eternal reward. What she imparted, what grandma imparted to Eunice, that imparted that to Timothy. You know, and in sharing with this, you think, well, what about my past? You're telling me everything that a mother should do or should be doing. And when I share with you, you can turn it and reverse the curse. And, and one of the individuals was Martha. Now, she wasn't a mother, but she was a woman. And Martha went about serving much. And she was distracted with much. And she was troubled with much. And you see, as an individual, as a woman, you got to be cautious that the troubles don't come in and the distractions don't come in where they trouble you. You need to trouble the trouble, not mothers. You need to come to a place where you're not only doing, but you're hearing. You see, faith comes by hearing, and you continue in the scriptures. But you see, Mary was hearing, and then she was doing. Martha was doing, and she was hearing. And you know, sometimes and all the time, we got to make it a responsibility of ours when we're coming to a place where we're hearing so that we can do. A lot of times our doing replaces our hearing because we find ourselves in what we do. Therefore, we don't make time for the Lord Jesus Christ because we want to be accepted and beloved by what we do. And mothers, you need to come to a time whether you work hurt or not hurt, you need to come to a time where your doing doesn't replace your hearing because in order for you to overcome the hurt from the past generations, maybe of your mother, okay, you need to sit at the feet of Jesus and have what he has so he can bring you to where he wants to bring you to. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves, comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You see, when you get this content, you know, Mary started comparing herself. She was probably saying, you know, or Martha was, she was probably saying, you know what? She's lazy. She's not doing this. She's not doing that. She's not doing this. But I'm here, you know, we can get caught up in that too. That too. Well, well, look, they got a nicer car, and, and they got a nicer uh, whatever it is. You've got something nicer. You, we're all getting caught up in it. But you see, it's not in comparison. And what God was telling Martha, look, Martha, you're comparing your current life. I'm here, Mother's Day. Don't compare your current life to somebody else's and realize that you're holding a short straw. Because you see, comparison is a trickster. Comparison, because you, comparison in other people's stories never really tell the truth. How many know we all got a story? And how many know that somebody's story looks better than somebody else's story? And so that's why he's saying, he's saying, Mark, don't become disgruntled. You know, when we're struggling, we need to go to the source first. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that have labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So it's not what Martha did. It's not what mothers should do. I'm here to tell you, if you're in Christ Jesus, you're on the winning team. Mother, don't be under condemnation for what you didn't do. Be under Righteousness be under the fact of what God did. Mothers, if you're in Christ Jesus, you ought not to be in fear of condemnation. You know, sometimes mothers may say, but you don't know what I did. I'm here to tell you, mothers, you don't know what he did. I'm here to tell you, mothers, you're not condemned. Mothers, even though you may feel you are condemned because of what you have done, or what other mothers have done to you, you are not condemned by messy houses. You're not condemned by your personal sins. You're not condemned for 
of desire to have more kids. You're not condemned by being divorced. You're not condemned by your desire to be alone and be away from the kids. You're not condemned by your failures as a mother. You're not condemned by the frustration of having to scrape macaroni and cheese off the kitchen floor. <laughs> You're not condemned because you got to do things you don't want to do. You're not condemned. Mothers, though you may feel condemned, if you are in Christ, you are not condemned. You have to fight the knowledge of what is really yours. And God is saying, look, he's saying, mothers, you need to find your identity in me. You need to realize, sure, as, as Timothy did, that his faith was sincere. His, uh, his faith was stable. He, his faith was stirring. And, and your mothers out there, you're not under condemnation for what happened to you or what you did. So because you're not, continue in the world because you'll have to see. And not only that, it will give you stability. And not only that, it will stir up your faith. And you'll go out being a mother. And God has more and more wanted to walk in your life to sit down. So don't be in the condemnation. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you. For great motherhood. Lord, I thank you for Lois. I thank you for Eunice. I thank you for Timothy. And Lord, I thank you for as we continue in the faith, Lord Jesus, that it will be sincere, stable, and it will be stirring within us. Lord, praise you and give you thanks and praise for what you're doing this Mother's Day. Yes. And we continue to do as we walk this walk in Jesus' name. Amen.